he finished an article called uh, Odnagar Chaiwala versus Boston Brahmin. Uh, you know, Modi has emerged out of uh, the RSS fold from a very, very low background. Uh, the basically uh, Thales who have been uh, rendered poor and then he became uh, a Chavender's son and then from there somehow he went into RSS and he has grown there. And uh, now after uh, he became the chief minister and then systematically strategized 2002 riots. He crushed very systematically <coughs> all other uh, activities in Gujarat. And the Muslims became completely uh, paralyzed because of the riots and the environment created in 2002 in uh, the whole country. And then he also outbet the Brahmins of Gujarat and the Patels. Because Gujarat was a state where there was a massive anti-OBC riot in 1985-86. That was the only state where there was anti-OBC riot. And this was state where scheduled caste reservation hardly gets implemented, scheduled tribe have any say, OBCs were completely, uh, you know, set aside in political domain. So he emerged. He emerged as a very strong leader. And then uh, slowly by 2013 uh, elections, he became very powerful. Now, incidentally, the RS has been has been working a strategy because after 19, uh, 1998 elections and then 1999 elections, then 2004. They, they ruled for six years with a lot of difficulties, once for 11 days, once for 11 months, then for uh, four and a half years, so on. So they strategized that Narendra Modi, who emerged as a leader within the ranks of RSS BJP, will be the first OBC candidate of prime ministership. Now, this is the whole uh, intellectual group within RSS sitting in different parts strategized this and then Modi was capable of uh, using that environment. Now, he forced himself to get into that stage and so, the RSS has uh, strategized that uh, Modi can be brought in as a prime ministerial candidate and see that the OBCs across the country get galvanized into electoral uh, processes and then gain out of that. Now, this has a very interesting dimension because all over the country, the OBCs uh, have a desire that there should be a prime minister of their own. Now, this desire uh, has not been uh, fulfilled for quite some time because, because the, the Congress has never promoted OBCs. Uh, historically, what happened was the Congress uh, social base was upper caste 
minorities, particularly Muslims and uh, Christians, Dalits, and to some extent tribals, Northeast tribes and uh, you know tribals across the country. So it kept OBCs completely uh, out of the political power realm in the uh, in the Delhi circuits. Now this is where uh, the the RSS thought that Modi can be brought in and he can uh, encash or, or galvanize out from the youth who have a new desire from the backward classes which have huge numbers. Now this seems to be really mobilizing a lot of youth uh, in support of Modi which essentially is not for BJP actually. BJP does not have an All India spectrum. But uh, now how is, how is Narendra Modi trying to do this? There are two things that he was uh, invoking into this uh, whole thing, invoking into, bringing into the whole discourse. One, first he started with development that Gujarat development is the model for the rest of India uh, once he becomes Prime Minister. Now this has opened up the whole uh, debate around development, but Gujarat development as it is not a very great development. There is, there is nothing substantial to say that the Gujarat model of development will develop scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, backward classes, because there, these sections did not get anything. Minorities are really suffering. We have done enough study uh, on that. Uh, I have uh, written an article, article in Economic and Political Weekly itself. So that one, the second one, he brought in Sardar Vallabhai. Now why did he bring Sardar Vallabhai Patel? Sardar Vallabhai Patel was a Shudra leader during the freedom struggle. Perhaps the tallest Shudra who got educated in England, but did not really become an intellectual to match Gandhi or Nehru or you know other Brahmins in those days. But because of the peasant pack, because of his, his capacity to mobilize peasants of India, he became the uh, uh, third rung leader after Gandhi and uh, Nehru. But quite systematically the Indian Brahmins at that time uh, under the leadership of uh, Nehru uh, though Gandhi was in the background uh, there, is a, there is a thinking that uh, Nehru scuttled his scope of becoming Prime Ministership and he was a very strong representative of the Patels of Gujarat and the Sudra communities of India. Now he has brought in uh, Sardar Vallabhai Patel from Congress fold itself. Quite interestingly, he was a Congress man. But Congress did not allow a Sudra to come to power when Nehru was alive and uh, even subsequently uh, I think, you know, the first Sudra Prime Minister of the country was Charan Singh. Uh, later on it was uh, Dev Gowda. So, no other, but they were not Congress people. So, Narendra Modi uses now uh, Sardar Vallabhai Patel. The third most important thing that he is using is Ichaiwala Bhakti. Now, what is the Chaiwala background? It is true that as a child, at the age of six, he started selling chai uh, in uh, Vodnagar bus stop. His, his brother had a small tea stall, uh, what we call the Bandi tea stall. And he, as a child, sold tea in the bus stop. Then he worked as a, a chai uh, supplier 
in uh, Vodnagar uh, uh, bus corporation, canteen he worked. Mm. Now this background is there. Now let us see who the Chaiwalas are in the country. What Congress intellectuals, whom I call Boston Brahmins, uh, got educated around Harvard, Cambridge, Oxford, whether it is uh, Manishankar Iyer, who adopted him as a Chaiwala, we will ask him to put a Chai stall in front of All India Congress Committee office, and uh, uh, Chidambaram or Rahul Gandhi himself said that I come from Brahmin background and he got educated in Cambridge, uh, London School of Economics and so on and so on. So even Kapil Sibal or all these people are Harvard, Cambridge, Oxford educated. Now they are not understanding his idiom. When he is talking about Chaiwala, he is talking about his OBC background. Now in India, who sell tea on the roads? Uh, Brahmins don't sell tea. Yeah. Banyas don't sell tea. Yeah. Kshatriyas don't sell tea. And at the lowest rung are the Dalits. Yeah. Dalits also are not tea vendors. Yeah. Because in villages, if Dalits sell tea, people don't drink. That yeah. problem is still there. So these tea vendors are backward classes and Muslims. Mostly backward classes. So what Narendra Modi is doing is by invoking the Chaiwala thing without telling that I am an OBC. Okay. He is telling the country that an OBC who came from the poorest of the poor background he is planning to become the Prime Minister and in the Congress there is dynasty, there is uh, Brahmin control, uh, there is this, you know, Nehru who is visibly known as a Brahmin. Now, Rahul Gandhi himself said that I am a Brahmin and then I got educated abroad and so on. So this, this he want to systematically oppose. But uh, you think, uh, <coughs> so were, uh, do you think na BJP is very progressive in that caste politics way. No, 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 it is not progressive. I'll come to that. What what the danger involved in this? So what is happening is all his meetings are being organized by RSS. Then RSS started a campaign that first we we are for the first time sending an OBC man into Prime Minister Is it publicly they say so or else uh, Yeah yeah they are they are the first, uh, the campaign was started by an OBC leader who was deputy chief minister in Bihar, Sushil Modi. He started on on a national English TV. Uh, he was uh, he was saying that you know we were putting an OBC prime minister. Then the campaign started by RSS and other forces. Uh, even in Andhra Pradesh. This campaign, uh, the Andhra Pradesh BJP wing president himself uh, is saying that OBC will become Prime Minister now. Now, the question is, it is known that Modi is anti-Muslim. But is Modi an anti-OBC or a, a promoter of OBC? This nobody understands. Modi was never a promoter of OBCs. Okay. Even in Gujarat, except himself, there is no big OBC. Not even his caste is represented in... No. Uh, secondly, in Gujarat, OBCs were oppressed for centuries. Patels came up, the, uh, the Banyas of Gujarat are very powerful. Uh, the Reliance and the Ambani's, the Tatas are, uh, the, the Tatas are uh, different people. Okay. But Birlas, 
and Marwadis, you know, Gujarat is the place of that. Then came up, Banyas came in the first, uh, Brahmins were there, Murarji Deshai, for example. So there are Brahmin, Banya forces, very strong industrial uh, and other economies they control. OBCs are basically labor in Gujarat. Now, when they wanted a reservation in Gujarat in 1885, Patels, Brahmins and Banyas, all of them together, uh, had a massive riot against OBCs. This is Patels attacked or else you mean? No, the, the whole were, upper caste, upper caste attacked went into OBC Wadas in uh, Ahmadnagar uh, itself and uh, burnt village houses, attacked OBC youth. So massive riot. There was a tribal chief minister for a short time during that period. And he gave some reservation to OBC Sabujara. So the OBCs were attacked. Then, in my own lifetime, in 1990, the Mandal struggle came. The first time in the history, OBCs uh, began to ask their share in power. Narendra Modi by then was a middle rung leader in BJP, RSS. And, uh, but he was never in support of Manda. There was no single statement. It is from BJP, to be honest, you know, um, uh, 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 Uma Bharati was active on OBC politics. He was in support of, but never, never OBC, uh, Modi was in support of Manda. Now, when he got elected two twi times as a chief minister of Gujarat. In 2007, the second phase mandal came. Mm -hmm. After uh, 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 UPA came to power, mm -hmm. the uh, reservation questions and the issue of layer and all giving that. reservations in private sector mm -hmm. came. Modi never supported that. He you mean he was quiet or was he openly? No, 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 no. He, he was silently right. against it. Okay. He was never in favor. In fact, the whole battle in 2007 was that there should be a reservation in private sector. Now today, Modi is a promoter of multinationals. And he is a blue height boy of Reliance even Tata's uh, multinational companies, though America does not give him visa, he is being promoted by the entire industrial lobby, film industry, media, entire this thing. But when it came to reservation in private sector, he was never for it. So that means what the RSS is strategizing that they will make him Prime Minister and when he was in, he is in power, they will begin to dismantle reservation system. Because it is, it is a good thing to dismantle reservation system when an OBC is a Prime Minister. Yeah. They, they may not touch the scheduled caste reservation. They may not touch the tribal reservation. So Muslims cannot move from their ghettos because once Narendra Modi is in power, Muslims cannot move from the ghettos because he is, he is, he, he, they know what he is. But the OBC's enthusiastic support, uh, the OBC youth who are rallying around, among, around him, want Change in life. How do they change? Are OBCs already in English medium universities, colleges? Are they in Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard? Are they part of the Boston Brahmins? 
they are not never they are not even the schools so this development that narendra modi is speaking is meant for the brahmins the banyas the kshatriyas and the new kshatriyas what i call the upper layer of sudras and you know the bengali badralo kind of uh, overall groups muslims will be completely set aside as of now you know in congress muslims are slightly visible take for example muslim question in gujarat in the entire assembly in, from bjp there is only one muslim candidate given ticket just one and the muslim population in gujarat is 9. Point, uh, now i think 11.2 earlier it was 9.7 something so imagine a party which gives just one ticket so today under the congress there is a muslim vice president muslims became presidents muslims became foreign ministers now foreign minister is a muslim and uh